Chapter 5. Spiders aren't trapped by their own webs. Neef's rules for changelings. I was about... I was out of the tree before I knew it. I felt like I was flying, but I couldn't have been. Mortals don't fly, either. I landed on a big furry, something that roared and grabbed at me, but I was too quick for it. The moment my feet hit the grass, the music caught me up like a newspaper in the wind. The knot of moral mortals was just on the other side of the garland of nymphs, but I couldn't get to them. My feet had to develop a mind of their own for about a heartbeat. I swear I caught the beat. Everything, the trees, the grass, the stones, the stars, the city, and the folk, the mortals, outside was part of the same dance, and it never ended. What been and what was to wear the same as now, and always would be? I forgot about the changelings. I forgot that I had ever been lonely or angry or even mortal. And then it fell, and it all fell apart. Suddenly, I had two left feet, and neither of them had the beat. The mortal changelings were no, nowhere in sight. I bumped into dwarfs and elbowed trolls and stepped on a blue demon who might have been Peg's friend, Blueberry. Werebearers growled at me as I stumbled in front of them. Fox spirits barked and snapped. I wished as, as hard as I could to be home asleep in bed with curtains drawn but it was all wishes made when it's too late it didn't come true all i could do was grimly keep on dancing and hope i didn't get trampled and then i found myself face to face with the green lady when she's happy the green lady of central park is as beautiful as most beautiful thing you can imagine she has a greeny brown skin long green long dark green ropes of hair and deep set eyes the color of new leaves after a rain, but she can change shape, and not at all her shapes are beautiful, and not at all of her shapes are beautiful. As soon as she saw me, her dreadlocks lifted and began to weave around her head and hiss like snakes. Um, emer emerald fire smoldered in her eyes. And her lips lifted over teeth that had grown suddenly needle-like. Can the music? Can the music, boys? She yelled. We have a situation here. The music fell silent and everyone stopped dancing like that. All I could hear was the panic thumping of my own heart and some noisy panting that was probably the mortal changelings. The lady said, do you know what you've done? She used the voice the folk used to ask rich, ritual questions, magic questions, questions you better answer carefully, or your history. Questions asked in this voice are never as simple as they sound. I licked my lips nervously. Um, could you repeat the question? A question is not an answer. The green lady said, the snakes wearing around her head. You must say yes or no. The thing is, I said, it's not that simple. I mean, I know what I did, but I don't know what it's a big deal if that's what you're asking. The green lady busts into howls of nasty laughter and were echoed by the sounded like every supernatural in New York. It was a horrible sound, full of the pro promise of blood and crunchy bones. I looked around for Estrus or the puka or the water rat or even a friendly moss woman to rescue me. But I was surrounded by open mouths and pointy teeth, tongues of red and blue and purple and black eyes like red sparks and eyes like soup plates, all of them hungry, hungry, hungry. You're a pistol, kid, the green lady said at last. You knew what you knew you were doing something wrong, right? Another trick question. I wrenched my mind from hungry eyes and tried to concentrate. Sure, every bevolent supernatural in the park had warned me away from the solstice dance, 
but I never thought about whether I might actually be breaking a rule. So I'd be lying a little whether I said yes or no. I thought it might be the safest if I shrugged. The lady's hair snakes all twisted around a, to get a good look at me. My mouth, my stomach turned over. I didn't mean to do something, something wrong. I explained. Uh, graduteria, the lady snapped. You think I was born yesterday? The squirrels tell me you've been breaking rules, right? Left and center since the spring cleaning day. Besides, it doesn't matter what you meant. It only matters what you did. But what did I do? I meant to yell, but it came out more like a sob. What did you do? The green lady echoed back at me. You just broke the geese I laid upon you. At your changing, that's all. I felt like I opened a door and gotten boinked by a brick. All I could think was, it's not fair and I want estrus. Something cold and wet touched my hair. I jumped about a mile and screeched. The green lady and the wild hunt howled with laughter. Astris patted my knee with a small pink paw. Hush, pet. It's only me. I did my best to keep this from happening, but mortals are so curious. Didn't I warn you that curiosity killed the cat? Her voice was brisk, but her whiskers were worried. I let my legs fold and put my arms around her. The green lady smiled graciously at us. What a good fairy godmother you are, Estrus. Aren't you going to fill the changelings in on what's going down here? Estrus' whiskers twitched angrily. Perhaps the lady will recall the that she laid a geese on me too. Not to speak on, of Neef's geese in her hearing, the lady said helpful, helpfully. Too bad you remembered. The hunt would have been a ball with a pair of you. She turned her leaf green eyes to me. Okay, kid, here's the scoop. The hunt, the hunt loves to hunt mortals, but mortal changelings are under my protection. So we have a deal. I put a geese on every mortal changeling that comes to the park, and when, er, if they break it, the hunt gets a crack at them. I couldn't believe I hear her right. Are you telling me that the wild hunt is going to chase me down for breaking a geese nobody was allowed to tell me about? Technically, the lady said, breaking the geese only removes you from my protection. But since my protection is the only thing keeping the wild hunt off you, yeah, that's about the size of it. The wild hunt cheered. My throat felt tight. Estrus pressed against me, warm and furry and solid. The hunt loved the taste of fear. I reminded myself freaking out would just bring them down on me faster. I swallowed hard. Get up, the green lady said, and I did, shakily. She lifted her slender hand, and her voice rolled like a bell over the mob of the New York folk. The changelings, Neef, having, having broken the geese laid upon her at her changing, is no longer under my protection. She is without home, without sponsorship, and all paths of park are close to her. And this, I swear by my name and hers. At the last word, she disappeared, taking Estrus with her. The wild hunt began to circle witter shins from right to left. No surprise, it's an unlucky direction. With every rotation, the hunters got a little closer to me, and I got a little closer to breaking down and running until they'd worked up an appetite. Another circuit, and I would I could smell their blood breath, hear their eager hungry whines. 
My jaw hurt from clenching it. My legs trembled. I couldn't stand it anymore. I opened my mouth and took a breath so I could scream and get over with. And that was when the big black thing came swooping down, grabbed my shoulders and strong, sharp claws and carried me away. That did it. I screamed like a banshee. The hunt leaped up at, after me, but whatever had naped me rose even faster. We spiraled smoothly and up and up, neatly avoiding the dragons and gar rudas and pigeons, other winged folk who had been dancing in the air. Soon we were so high I could see the whole part spread out below with the buildings of the city clustered around it like a stone forest around the green lake. I screamed some more, though whatever it was plunged down through the center of the hunt, leaving my stomach behind it. It wheeled and flew east over the Metropolitan Museum, and suddenly it dawned. It suddenly it dawned to me that maybe I was being rescued. I stopped screaming, but I didn't relax. How could I? I was about twenty stories up, dangling from a pair of really sharp claws, and belonged to something that might be taking me home so it wouldn't have to share. Not to mention, I was heading out into the city. For me, the city was something to look at, not visit. For me, the city was even more dangerous than the North Woods. We swooped down towards a pale building, crowded with glittering gold. I closed my eyes and waited for the crash, but there was one, but there wasn't one. I touched solid ground with my feet. The claws released my shoulders, and I collapsed, shaking all over. Then I was scooped up in somebody's arms this time, carried a little way, and dropped onto something soft. We were there, wherever there was, and I was still alive.